Tip Studio, but all those of you who know what we're doing today, it's not me you want to talk to, it's Luke, of course, because this is a special Thursday Tips Live where we're talking to you about the new Laidback Luke creative DJing course that Luke has made with us here at Digital DJ Tips. We're really proud to have made it with him. So that is what's going on today for the next 20 or 30 minutes. Uh, I'm here in the Digital DJ Tips studio and hopefully uh, I can call Luke in from uh, Amsterdam, uh, which would be pretty damn cool, uh, uh, wouldn't it, to get Luke live here on this. So let me just click the button and hopefully there he is. Hello, Luke. Hey, how's it going? It's really cool. Good to have you here. So, um, so this is a special, uh, a special live show. We're on Facebook on the Digital DJ Tips page. We are on uh, YouTube on the Digital DJ Tips channel. We're on our Global DJ Network for all the uh, very enlightened people who are in the Digital DJ Tips Global DJ Group. And we're talking about your new course, Luke. So. Um, Today, we're going to do questions. So everyone, questions for Luke about his course, about DJing in general. Also, Luke, at the end, we've got something very special, right? Something very special indeed. So uh, we'd like for you to, to stick with us because this is something you don't want to miss out on. No, indeed. So I can't wait to, can't wait to get to that. But we're not going to jump the questions. Uh, there's a few people saying they can't hear the audio, but I think we're probably all right. Uh, someone just type, I can hear you fine, uh, into ah, Facebook well, or something. Uh, and uh, then we'll be, able to, we'll be able to know for sure that that's working. Uh, so a few people just saying hello. Uh, we got hello from... Uh, Jeremy says, hello, Luke, what's up, buddy? Danny F and Daniel and Steve and Stefan saying, hi, finally. Uh, what's up, everybody? Um, it's difficult to listen because I'm writing like crazy, says Daryl. So obviously we've got some questions coming in. So questions for Luke, people, and everyone can hear us fine, by the way. Uh, so before, uh, while we're letting people type, because of course everyone's gonna be uh, typing away there with the stuff they want to ask directly to you, Luke. Luke, we spent a long time together conceiving, planning, three trips to Amsterdam, uh, and then that, that intense filming session. How does it feel to finally have your course out there and available to the world? Oh, it's incredible. And what a great job you guys did with constructing the whole of this, because all of this has just been DJ experience for over these two decades that's been stuck in my head, and I would have not have a clue how to properly express that in a, in a curriculum way that you guys did and it, look, it looks amazing cool so um so it's out there it's available uh, this week it is uh, it's a special special reduced price to let everyone you know everyone who really wanted it get on uh, a slightly less outlay uh, and um there's just so many people you know there's so much love coming in here for you that there's no one actually asking any questions right now uh, which is awesome they're just people are just saying wow this is amazing but here is our first proper question and by the way people we've got luke here for 20 minutes or so this is your chance um this is douglas who says hello luke what was the best part of making this course for you mm -hmm. hi douglas uh thanks for your question the best part was actually uh, the amount of fun we had uh, backstage uh, both <laughs> phil and steve are hilarious and we've had moments where we we couldn't record and we were just laughing and laughing and laughing um but also just to see how uh, you know all of these Things that I naturally do have been turned into proper lessons for you to, to pick up and to, to properly share this knowledge with you. I'm super happy about that as well. So I'm glad that you enjoyed the experience because we were, I think we were all a bit nervous, weren't we, as to how that was going to go. It was a, an awful long time we were spending together. Just one, two words to say to you, Luke, inflatable penis. So, right. Yeah. Okay. There's a... So no censor censorship right here. <laughs> no, yeah. no censorship. There's a little Easter egg in the course, by the way, if you look very carefully, people. Uh, and what I just said will make a bit more sense. So, uh, so okay, cool. Uh, right. Here we go. This is quite a long question, and I like this question because there's a, a bit for you to get stuck into, Luke. It's from DJ Paul, uh, DJ Paul T in the UK, who says, Hi. "So, Luke, I meant to ask you the other day." Uh, so as you know, I'm relearning the skill again after 19 years away. Um, yeah. So I like to mix like you, says Paul, not pre-planned, just freestyle. But I tend to run out of ideas after about 25 minutes. Uh, any advice? Yeah. So this is uh, one of the lessons that's in the course as well. Hi, Paul, by the way. Shouldn't you be working? I know Paul personally <laughs> as well. Um, but this is a, a part of the lesson as well. Uh, in uh, one of the lessons, or a couple of lessons, I'll explain how I always have a, like a little cloud of tracks in my mind going round. And you can see this, uh, you, you know, whenever you see my in my mind courses as well, is that 
I always fabricate these constructions on how to mix on the fly. And this little cloud of tracks um, is always helping me with that. And for some reason, you know, obviously we have the, the basic form of mixing. For some reason, I, I don't want to commit to that ever. And I'm always <laughs> thinking of method, methods on how to, how to mix tracks uh, differently. So do you think there's a difference, Luke, between mixing in your studio at home or in your bedroom or whatever and mixing in front of a crowd? Are, you, are the ideas going to flow more easily if you're playing in front of other people? Uh, and is it, is, it, is, that the, you know, is, it, is it kind of understandable sometimes if you're just at home on your own that maybe it's harder to get into that flow? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, the, obviously, the difference is that uh, you're in front of a crowd or not. And a lot of times, indeed, I get my inspiration from looking at the crowd, mm. seeing what they want, seeing what they need at the moment. But on the other hand, when I'm at home mixing, I'll always picture myself a crowd. And, and the biggest one is that sometimes I'm recording at home and I'm, you know, just by myself doing this, <laughs> imagining uh, an ultra main stage in front of me or something. So that really helps me with with keeping engaged in what, what I'm doing and what I'm setting out to. So I've seen Luke's DJ set up at home and he's got it turned around facing into the room. I think this is actually quite important. If you've got your DJ gear at home, folks, and it's pushed against a wall, kind of out the way, what you're telling yourself there is, this isn't really important. You know, flip it around if you can. Get it so that you can, you can practice looking out. Maybe another little tip there. Um, all right, then. Um, here's a great question from Logan. Uh, Luke, if you could teach only one skill what would it be? Whoa, that's a tough <laughs> question because the thing in this course is that we are teaching so many skills and um, I didn't even realize that there was such an abundance of skills um, and variations you could do uh, within DJing. So the one skill, you know what, I think probably the most important skill for me would be the ability to watch a crowd. Um, and this is so easily overlooked nowadays and it's such a integral integral part of uh, of real DJing but something that's so subtle and that's hard to pick up on or hard to explain but that's that's a big one though so crowd and we talk about watching the crowd and we talk about that that stuff in the course of course uh, so you're known for that right you're known for reacting to what's going on in front of you and not sticking to not sticking to the program but people might think you're going to say oh it's mixing or it's you know but it's actually just keeping an eye on who you're with right keeping an eye on, yeah. on the energy and the people there exactly Cool. Um, all right, here's a question from Mark over on, uh, over on YouTube. Uh, Mark says, I'm a fairly new DJ, just about six months in. I've played out quite a bit. So well done, Mark. Six months well. in, that's cool. Uh, and I've had some great success so far. Is it too soon for me to consider this course? No, absolutely not. So this course is for everyone from ranging from beginners to seasoned DJs because it's just such an elaborate course. We cover so many things and I uh, even dare to say that for some scratch DJs this will be interesting because I explain three deck mixing which is something that most scratch DJs don't even do uh, but within my techno roots um, I've I've done uh, a lot and uh, so no Mark especially if you're making progress like this uh, it'll be handy for you to learn how to read a crowd for instance and there's many more things so of course DJing is it's five big things and it's what we talk about in the book of course there's 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 gear music techniques playing out promoting yourself and getting gigs and luke's course concentrates on the the technique side of it because that's what luke wanted to get across but luke you go into your philosophy you go into your music and your gear and so on so it's not just solely techniques is it and if people need a bit of help in the other areas there's so many little bits that you've put in there that kind of round round the picture out uh, the way you see it right I think it's interesting uh, that some people ask me as well if this course was uh, just for uh, DJs on, on only on Denon gear. And no, it's not. It's uh, for all platforms and it's really the, the essence of DJing, I would say. There's a quite a few people asking exactly that. So for all those of you asking about whether it's just for Denon gear, it's, it, it couldn't be further from the truth because we've been very careful all the way through to say, if you're using something different, you'll find it here or look for this and so on. Because DJing's DJing, right? I mean, everyone likes the gear they like. And Luke, you're a big fan of the Den and stuff, which is awesome. But at the end of the day, it's about the records and the skills and the crowd and, uh, and so on. Um, all right, here's a great question from Diego. Nice to have you here, Diego. Diego is local to us here in Gibraltar. So there you go. Nice. 
It says, Luke, if you do a mistake or you start badly, how do you handle the pressure um, of giving your crowd your best version? So it's all yeah. started bad. You know, we've all had the video game where we lose a life straight away, right? How do you handle it, Luke? Yeah, that's a, that's a tough one. You've got to be really stubborn for that. And uh, I, I do think we touch base upon that in the course as well, um, where you should actually own your mistake. And instead of, you know, getting angry or getting frustrated and showing this to the crowd, you just stay calm and just move along. And sometimes you might want to use a mistake for, for your own benefit. You know, if you, if you pull out the one fader uh, by mistake, then do it another five times and, and own that mistake. Uh, I love it. Yeah. And we do. And we do. You, rem, you reminded me we do cover that very much. A little technical question. This is from Robert. Luke, do you ever change the key of a track by one or two semitones in order to make the transition more seamless? See, so let me make this a shameless Denon plug right now. We uh, <laughs> over this last month, uh, our new update implemented a key change. And so I only recently started doing this. Um, uh, on the Pioneer uh, Nexus uh, system, there's no such thing. So for years, I, I couldn't do that. But right now, during my festival season, I've been doing that on festivals and, uh, yes, uh, changing the key. Although I don't really think uh, the key is very important, but to, to run an a cappella over, over a track, um, it's become very handy. It's very interesting in the course. Luke talks about his philosophy of key mixing. Of course, Luke, you're a producer. You understand music. You're a, you're a musician. You know you know when something's in key and not. But people, you'll be very interested to see Luke's philosophy of that. It goes into some depth in the course. And by the way, all digital systems that are used software have got the key sync feature. So if you're sat there with your nice. control, if you sat there with your controller, have a, a smile to yourself because you'll be able to do exactly what Luke's just been able to do uh, on his system. Cool. Um, so Tim, he says. You mentioned in your course to never play anything you don't like. What's your balance between crowd pleasers and songs you like? Or are they one and the same thing, Luke? Um, no, it's because uh, a lot of the times, the, the things I like, the crowd doesn't know. And one uh, important thing of uh, uh, old school DJing is that uh, the DJ was a tastemaker as well. So to, to serve the crowd things they, they don't know. And I have a 50-50 balance in that. So um, I, uh, I recently tweeted, uh, remember kids, it's not about playing the hits, it's about playing what's in between the hits uh, that defines you. And I, I still see it that way. So you can serve you know, the, the, the stuff they know, but then put something in that, that you like. And uh, by always playing anything you, you love, you get you st you're still enthusiastic and you're still in the set as a as a dj it's uh it, it's important as well that to, to to mention you do go into this as well in the in the course and and how to define your style while still pre uh, cle pre <laughs> pleasing the crowd let me get my words out uh, all right here's a great question from shane who's on youtube hello shane he says when you're practicing scratching luke how much time would you recommend spending uh on this in in a week Oh man, uh, as much as you can, really, because it's such a tough skill to to learn, and I, I still catch myself only practicing, you know, maybe once every three weeks, and I'll uh, I'll do an hour, and I, I wish that could be more, because uh, at the end of those sessions, especially when you when you understand how to uh, practice slow first and going up in BPM. And then at the end of it, you, you acquire a new skill and it's it's amazing. But yeah, really as much as you can, because I do feel that scratching will uh, give you a, a, a lot of self-confidence in your sets and in handling your equipment and not to necessarily, you know, always do scratch solos or, or showing off like that. It'll just make you, um, yeah, more, more uh, secure. It gives you more of, a, of a, a feeling of being in charge, doesn't it? Because that's um, right. Uh, because uh, you're you're actually handling the music, uh, Theo. This isn't a qu this isn't a question. It's just uh, I'll, I'll read this out anyway. Theo says, "Laid back, Luke. I've been watching you since 2013. Been an amazing journey of education uh, since. Much love for all the support and love you shed on the industry. So oh, uh, that's amazing. Uh, I'm always so happy to hear that. That's incredible. Oh, uh, cool. Um, uh, and James says, uh, "Hey, Luke. Just wondering if you taught Phil and the rest of the team any kung fu." Uh, thanks again for making the course. Uh, did we learn any martial arts while we were uh, together? No, actually, uh, I, I noticed that both uh, Steve and Phil are uh, 
perverts more than martial artists. So <laughs> most most of it revolved around very corny jokes. You do know my wife's watching this, don't you, Luke? Uh, and and on that on that on that note, Steve Canueto, who is uh, one of the production team there, says, "Hey, Luke, have you ever DJed in an Irish pub?" So. Uh, have yeah, you ever DJed Irish in an Irish pub? pub? They're no, everywhere. I, I, They're I've everywhere. DJ, I've DJed in um, in Ireland a lot, but uh, that surely that's different. <laughs> I'd say so. Yeah, I'd say it's probably the only place that uh, you know. Well, the only place that's actually. Irish with an Irish pub because they're all over the world. Even Sharm El Sheikh last time I was there had yeah, an Irish I, pub. Uh, yeah, I, I caught that. Reference. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So over on YouTube, Soundbug says, Luke, biggest question of all time. Can you guess the key of a track just by listening to it? Ooh, no, I'm, a, I'm afraid not. I have to be very honest with you. I am, however, very picky on keys. And so whenever I'm producing as well, I can hear something being 15 semitones off or or not and especially when i work together uh in the studio with singers and tried to get their pitch right um but that's a different thing so actually to out of the blue to hear what key something is no i i would need a, a little bit more practice uh, within that i've only ever met one person who could do that he was the keyboard player in my band when i was a teenager and it was uh, very impressive i have to say yeah. um so dustin says how about getting gigs for stuff you don't like to play should i turn down gigs or just roll with it well, see, and this is more of a life question. What makes you happy? So I've noticed uh, myself as well. Sometimes you can do things for a bucket load of money, but then you end up being there and, and the rest of the week you feel very unhappy. And so what's what's worth more, you know, is, uh, is uh, you pursuing your passion um, or, you know, paying the rent. So there is a, a type of balance there. If it's urgency and you, you need to pay your rent, yeah, go. Sure, go for it. But if you're uh, wanting to be an artist and you're st wanting to stand for something and, you know, the money isn't that tight, I would say no. So we have a, a kind of rule here. We call it the 10% rule. We say if 10% of you wants to do a gig, probably go for it at the beginning of your career because you're going to learn so much by playing those gigs. But um, if 0% of you wants to do it, if you want to play techno and you've been asked to do a wedding, that's kind of different, isn't it? So I think, uh, I think there is a distinction at the beginning of your career, right? It's probably good to play as often as you can, whatever's offered Absolutely. to you. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I myself as well, at the beginning of my career, any gig is a gig and, uh, and uh, you'd want to soak up that experience. Absolutely. So this is a question that lots of people are asking in different ways. So I'll just read out one version of it, Luke. Um, your course is more festival club DJ oriented or will mobile DJs get some good information from this? That was from Julian, but lots of people have asked the same question. Luke? Yeah. No, it covers all grounds, really. So we, uh, we go from uh, big festival tracks into mixing techno with three decks into a lot of BPM transitioning. We actually, we go full circle in the course on how to mix from uh, 110 BPM uh, all the way up to 160 and then back again. And uh, so we cover all bases. And there's an awful lot of pop music in there. There's an awful lot of tracks in there mixed in. I and mean, we cover all styles, right? So we've got, like you say, there's EDM, there's house, there's techno, there's reggaeton, there's pop, there's, there's old rock, there's stuff from decades ago, stuff from now. Uh, Luke That's is right. very, he gets bored very quickly, I'll tell you that, people. Luke, yeah, do Luke, Luke doesn't like to stick on one genre or one style or one anything for too long. I mean, uh, music is, uh, is amazing, and I'm just a music lover, and um, w whichever jacket you can put it in to entertain the crowd, um, and this is in the course as well. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm just scanning the questions because I want to try and pull out as many different types of questions as possible to, uh, you know, to, cover, to, to cover a mixture of what people are saying. Uh, and I think this is a good one. This is one that is, is up your street, Luke. This is from Mix It Mike, who says, I never pre-plan a set, but I set aside the tunes I want to play in a, in a playlist in no particular order. But I'm not very good at reading a crowd. If I play a song that isn't getting a good reaction, I quickly mix out of it. How do you actually read a crowd and know what song to actually play? Yeah. Well, this is a, this is a good uh, way, Mike. Uh, absolutely. You're mixing out quickly, that's a, that's a great uh, skill to have whenever you see something not working. But I always uh, tend to say to the light jockey as well to, to light up the room a little bit so I can see the faces. So I did Tomorrowland uh, this last weekend and judging by the temperature and, and the faces of the people, at a certain point I was, I was giving a lot of gas and I was, I was looking, looking at the people and they started sweating and a couple of people were like, ah, 
And so by, only by the faces, you can already tell that they needed to have a little bit more of a uh, taken back in, uh, in energy and a little bit of a massage to take it back up later. And, you know, whenever people start looking unhappy or b being bored or looking looking around them, you, you know something is not working and you need to switch it up. And at, at a certain point, you'll hit bullseye and then it's like, okay, so I'll give you more of this right now. And that's that's it in a nutshell, really. It's um, it's a bit like playing darts, isn't it? Sometimes you know you throw every corner of the board, and as soon as you start to get a reaction, you kind of aim at that corner a little bit more. But at the, uh, do yeah. you find at the beginning of a set you you try different things just to see what's going to work, and then kind of kind of like a like a guided missile, you kind of hone in on the stuff that you think is going to work after experimenting a little bit. Absolutely. So when talking about my Tomorrowland uh, set. You'll always see in my live sets, I need a good 10 minutes to really get into it, to get used to the gear, the environment, the crowd. And after about 10 minutes, I'm like, okay, so we're good. So you want this, you'll get this, and, and we'll, we'll just go in there. And uh, yeah, it, it does take a little bit of time always. And it takes balls as well, doesn't it? You know, to, to take that time for yourself to work it out. Because DJs, you know, 30 seconds can seem like an hour if the crowd aren't getting it. So to actually give yourself the time to work that out, is that something you've learned over time to, you know, that it takes that long? So you, yeah. you cut well, yourself enough slack to, to, to get through that period? I guess it's just a necessity, really. I would love to nail it in uh, within 30 seconds, but doing it live and really feeding off the crowd just needs a little bit more time. So for those people just joining in, uh, clearly we've got Leibat Luke, always there. Uh, Leibat Luke here live, and we're talking about the creative DJing course that we've made with Luke and that is now uh, is now available. I'm showing you the artwork on the screen there. At the end of this broadcast, we'll show you where to get it. In fact, let's show you where to get it now. You can get it from this link. That link, I'm just trying to point at it with a split screen, Luke. Uh, and you can head there, my team will pin it as well. Go and have a look, Luke explains more about it there. But it's an awesome course we've made uh, to help people who want to DJ and get into the mind of Luke. Uh, and it's very new and uh, we're very, very proud of this thing. Uh, and in fact, we've got a question exactly about that now, which is from Jose, who says, what was the reason, Luke, for you to share your experience with us? Why did you do this? Yeah, that's a great question. And you know what, I've been doing this on a regular ever since 2000, just trying to help people and, and share my knowledge with people. Because for myself, as a young and upcoming DJ, I was struggling always. And I was always looking for knowledge as well. And, and to be able to, to share that is um, it's incredible. And, and together with Digital DJ Tips, who have a, a ton of experience making all these uh, curriculums, we've poured it into a proper... Uh, education and and it's so all round. Um, it's not you know it's called creative DJ course, but it's really there for you to to get more. Uh, uh, how do you say that? The power, like a self self confidence. Yeah, um, self confidence. But it's self -confidence. also it's also self realization, isn't it? Because uh, let me share something here. When we got together, we we it was quite intense at first, wasn't it, Luke? Because we we had to work out the best way of getting all this stuff out of you. And and once we got into the flow, it just kind of wouldn't stop. And um, I, and I think that's the value here, that we got we got deep into how you do this stuff over quite a long time. And we were there day after day after day, 15 hour days, cameras rolling. Um, well, it's funny, I, re I remember, you know, just uh, talking to you guys for 30 seconds and every 30 seconds you would say, oh, there's a lesson, oh, there's a lesson, <laughs> oh, there's a lesson. I'm like, I don't know, man, I'm just talking about DJing right now. Uh, trust us people sometimes when you are so deep in something you don't realize you know you've climbed to the top of the dj mountain all you can see is the top of all the other dj mountains you can't see down to the bottom and you know that's what we were there for as teachers to to unpick all that so that everyone else can can get the value from it it was it was great fun um so here's a great one from mark we'll just do another five minutes if that's all right with you luke and then we'll yeah. reveal the big the big thing we want to share with everyone, which is money can't buy this, people. So hang on for another five minutes for that. Uh, Mark, Luke, do you have a pre-game prep routine before you a, take to the stage? A pre-game prep routine? No. Do you stand on um, one stand on one leg and close your eyes and you know? The only <laughs> the only thing I do is unravel my little in-ear uh, headphones, and that gives me gets me into the zone. And sometimes people ask me just before I do that so just before I go on is uh, they're asking me oh so what track are you going to start with or you know can can we have the USB to your intro and that sort of thing and I'll always tell them 
dude, I have no clue what I'm playing. And so, somet- uh, so, so sometimes when I unravel, it's there where I found find out listening to the DJ before me, oh, you know what, let's start with that track. And luckily it never happened that I actually go onto the stage and I, ha- I have no clue. But it, it, is, uh, it is kind of random like that. I'll, I'll get into the, the, the really, from the really laid back Luke person that I am to the out there Luke on stage just unraveling my headphones. It's true because we filmed probably 80 times and every single time the same unraveling, the same order. We noticed it. We picked up on it, Luke. Uh, yeah. Dan Demand says, is this course a one-time payment or over a few months? I can answer that. It's a one-time payment, but you get to keep it forever. Uh, and it's very cheap right now. It will never be that cheap again, people. Um, so uh, this one is, uh, let's have this as the final question before moving on to the news we've got to reveal, Luke. Uh, this is from... Stan on Facebook who says, Hi Luke and Phil, I've been on the decks for about 10 years and I still feel like an imposter. I still feel like I'm not quite getting there as a DJ. Obviously practice makes perfect, but with a busy life, what else can you recommend? Yeah, so we we touch base on that as well uh, in the course on how to prep for shows and whatnot. And I do feel I have a good little system there to to be able to develop your own DJ skills and... uh, Within that, you'll feel more comfortable behind the decks as well because you'll you'll need to spend more more time behind that. And often, I I tell young and up and comers, uh, I remember this talk I had once with Alesso. He uh, we were on Creamfields uh, Brazil, and he was about to to play right before me, really. And he was nervous. He was having two drinks in his hand, and he was like, oh drinking and getting ready and he's like Luke I don't know how you do this how do you cope with you know these nerves and I, I, I only asked him okay so how long have you been DJing right now and he's like only for six months and there he was on the main stage of Creamfields uh, Brazil and I'm like dude I've been doing this currently for what was it 15 years or or, or over 10 years and there it is. It's really about mileage and, and just spending that time behind the decks and getting used to everything. I, I, I want to share a story here. Oh, five years into DJing in clubs, for me personally, and this is 10 years into DJing because I did a lot of mobile at the beginning. Uh, some, I, I still felt that nervous that if someone had come up to me and said, what are you doing? You're not a DJ. Why, why are you doing this? Uh, I, I still felt, I remember strongly thinking I was just going to drop my head and walk away. Now, bearing in mind, I'd bought my house by this point, purely on what I'd earned as a DJ. You know, it, guys and girls, it's so natural to feel this way. Um, it's yeah. just, it's this imposter syndrome thing is, it's even got a name. So just keep pushing on, keep improving and keep getting gigs. Um, Lots of people who've already got the course are coming in saying they're loving it, by the way, Luke. Um, someone's ah, saying, that's great news. Someone's saying, I've just learned how I've got to do cue points, finally. So, um, so that's awesome. Right, listen, let's move on because we've got something to reveal about this, which is very exciting. So, Luke, one lucky person, one lucky student of this course is going to win something that literally money can't buy. So why don't you explain what this lucky student, drawn randomly from everyone who signs up in this opening week, is going to yeah. win? What are they going to that's get? A, that's a, indeed, it's, a, it's something huge. It's an experience. You're going to be able to come with me to a show. We're going we're gonna to hang out backstage. You can ask me anything you want. I'll take you even out to the side of the stage where you can uh, watch me perform. And uh, yeah, we're just going to hang out together. And um, within that, uh, just ask me anything and, and I'll teach you along the way. So it's a really a, a personal experience we are offering right here. So I'm showing a picture of you. And the picture's taken from the place where you're going to be standing, lucky winner of this amazing prize. Uh, you're going to stand there, you're going to watch Luke performing somewhere in the world uh, in front of lots and lots of people and get a chance to have your DJing questions answered directly from him. So it's an awful prize. Uh, awful? I, what a slip. <laughs> it's, a, it's an awesome prize. Uh, flights and hotel and all that good stuff. So it's, it's something that we, we, we want to do uh, to kind of get people who might be on the edge about this to dive in and have a go because... Well, Luke, we're very proud of this course, aren't we? And, uh, Absolutely. And it's, yeah, it's something, one of, the, uh, one of the most worthwhile things that we've, we've ever done at Digital DJ Tips, and we've done an awful lot. So, uh, so that's cool. Uh, all right, listen, 
For the last half an hour, Luke's been talking about Laid Back Luke's creative DJing course. If you did join us late, then please just go and watch the replay. It will be available soon on Facebook and YouTube. Please hit the share button, people, and get this out far and wide because we want people to, to learn about what's going on here. And uh, thank you very much, Luke, for taking the time to come and join us here today. Uh, it's I my pleasure. I think I can let you get back to your practicing. Where's your next gig, Luke? My next gig will be at Colors Festival in uh, in Scotland, in Glasgow, this Saturday. Awesome. So you've got a little bit of practicing there. And we talk all about how you practice as well. Your 5-2 blueprint for always being ready for your weekend's gigs. Just that's something right. else that's there. Loads of people saying thank you. Uh, Jose just says, wow. Paul says, thanks, guys. Um, someone said something which is... Um, completely unreadable but it was good Luke so uh, <laughs> <That's great. laughs> let's pause them there uh, thank you very much Luke thanks everyone for tuning in here listen guys and girls get good get out there and make the moments this has been Thursday Tips Live from Digital DJ Tips Luke have a good one mate thank you everyone bye enjoy bye bye, -bye.